So the topic for today is dimension reduction and manifold learning. And uh, so uh, what we have is uh, the raw data that's uh, usually given to us is uh, very high dimensional. And so the sample points are high dimensional vectors. And the goal is to reduce the number of dimensions and obtain low dimensional vector samples out of the high dimensional raw data. And uh, so that's dimension reduction. And manifold learning is uh, nothing but nonlinear dimension reduction. Okay, so why do we need to reduce the number of dimensions? For that, the answer is the curse of dimensionality. The curse of dimensionality is uh, uh, illustrated by this uh, example. So let's say the number of dimensions is uh, this uppercase D. And what we are interested in is the ratio of a hypersphere in D dimensions uh, and the uh, volume of the bounding hypercube. So in two dimensions, it's like this. The hypersphere is this uh, red circle. And uh, the bounding hypercube is this green uh, square. And uh, D is a parameter that depicts the size of the hypersphere and the bounding hypercube. So let's look at this ratio. In two dimensions, uh, the, uh, the uh, volume of the hypersphere is simply the area of uh, this uh, circle, which is pi r squared, or 1 over 4 pi d squared. And the volume of the bounding hypercube is the area of this green square, which is simply d squared. And this ratio is 1 over 4 pi, which turns out to be 0 0.78 pi numerically. Now, in three dimensions, the volume of the hypersphere is uh, 4 over 3 pi r cubed, which is 1 over 6 pi d cubed. And the volume of the bounding hypercube is the volume of a cube, which is d cubed. And this ratio is 1 over 6 pi, which is numerically equal to 0 0.524. And in four dimensions, this ratio turns out to be 0 0.308. In five dimensions, it's 0 0.164. And so what we observe is that this ratio decreases rapidly with the increasing number of dimensions. In other words, the hypersphere is much smaller than the bounding hypercube. So what does that mean? So in two dimensions, we're good. And as we increase the number of dimensions, the hypercube becomes a lot bigger than the hypersphere. And so most of the data, if uh, data is uh, scattered around this hypersphere, uh, uh, enclosed within this hypersphere, uh, excuse me, if the data is enclosed within this hypercube, then most of the data lies outside the hypersphere. So high dimensional data is very spiky. Most of the volume of the hypercube is outside the hypersphere. And therefore, most of the data will also lie outside the hypersphere. And so these data points will be outliers. They are on the corners of the uh, hypercube. They are not in the hypersphere. And so most of the data becomes outliers, and that's when we increase the number of dimensions. So that's one aspect of the curse of dimensionality. And there are many other reasons uh, why uh, 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 dimensionality is in fact a curse. And so in general, let's look at what happens. So high dimensional data is very difficult to handle. And the difficulty increases rapidly with the number of dimensions. So when we increase the number of dimensions, if the data is very high dimensional data, 500,000 dimensional data, then it's extremely difficult to handle the data. And so that's why we need to reduce the number of dimensions. And so the dimension reduction is needed to make the data more practical. And there are classical methods, which are linear methods, 
and uh, the three linear methods are PCA, LDA, and uh, MDS. And uh, modern methods are nonlinear methods, and these are all manifold learning. There are several algorithms that have been proposed recently for manifold learning. LLE, isomap, uh, Laplacian eigenmaps, MVU, LKSA, and so on. And all these algorithms are actually derived from either LLE or from isomap. So now let's go on to manifold learning. Uh, manifold learning is simply nonlinear dimension reduction. Okay, so what exactly is a manifold? A manifold informally is, so we have high dimensional data. It's a lower dimensional um, curved surface that's lying inside the high dimensional uh, uh, space. And uh, so locally Euclidean manifold is a manifold where if you zoom in, you can approximate the manifold locally with a flat uh, surface. And so you can apply um, a triangle inequality and so on at very small uh, uh, regions of the manifold. Okay, so now data points are in high dimensions. And in manifold learning, the assumption is that the high dimensional data, it looks like high dimensional data, but in fact, it is embedded in some lower dimensional manifold inside the high dimensional space. And so the goal of manifold learning is to do the following, is to stretch the manifold. So we have the original manifold, and then after we apply the manifold learning algorithm, what we get is something like this. So the manifold has been stretched, and this is what manifold learning is all about. So here is an example of a real algorithm for manifold learning. Now this is called a Swiss roll. It's uh, uh, a uh, manifold that's in three dimensions. It looks like uh, uh, a rolled up uh, carpet, actually. And so the in the middle, what you look at is uh, all these uh, points. These are actual data points. These are three dimensional points, but they are actually inside on, rather, uh, the Swiss roll manifold. And after uh, uh, manifold learning is applied, what you get is this. And so this Swiss roll now has been flattened out. Okay, uh, two issues uh, that we will deal with in manifold learning are precession and recall. And this was uh, proposed very recently um, in this uh, paper. And so what are precession and recall? Precession, the definition is, Points closely spaced in low dimensional space are also closely spaced in high dimensional space. The low dimensional space is the output of the manifold learning algorithm and the high dimensional space is the original space. And so this is the definition of precision. And what's recall? Recall is points closely spaced in high dimensional space are also closely spaced in low dimensional space. That's recall, and the two are kind of the opposite of one another. And the trade-off is, it's probably not possible to simultaneously achieve good precision and good recall. Okay, and uh, so let's see. Here is an example that I got from that same paper. Top left, you see a sphere, which is our manifold, and we see all these colored points that lie on the surface of this sphere, the three-dimensional manifold. And then bottom, A and B, we have two different algorithms which reduce the number of dimensions to two. Bottom left, the algorithm has good precision, and bottom right, the algorithm has good recall. Now, let's look at what's, uh, what's the recall of the bottom left algorithm, A. Okay, so now let's look at 
these set of points here. We have two sets of points uh, enclosed by these red um, ellipses. And in high dimensional space, they are closely spaced. Now, after the uh, dimension reduction, what happens is, now th this set of data moves here, and the other set of data has actually moved here. So they are no longer closely spaced in the low dimensional space, they are further apart. And so this is poor recall, a bad recall. Now, let's look at precision. Concentrate on the algorithm B, uh, the output of which is shown in bottom right. Okay, so now let's look at closely spaced uh, uh, points here. So we have two sets of points that are closely spaced, and uh, that's in the low dimensional space. Now, where did they originally come from? One set came from this side of the manifold, and the other set of points came from the other side of the manifold. So they are actually, they were originally very far apart, and uh, yet when we applied the manifold reduction technique, then it somehow turned out that they became closely spaced, which is undesirable. And so this is an example of bad precision. And like I said, it's not normally um, possible to accomplish both good precision and good recall simultaneously in an algorithm. Now here are um, examples of uh, actual different uh, manifold learning algorithms and uh, they have been applied to this uh, S-shaped manifold here that's in three dimensions and uh, out here there is only one MDS, which is actually a linear method of dimension reduction. And all it has done is, you look at this S-shaped uh, uh, set of points, and it just flattened it out. It still retains the S-shape. So the linear method doesn't work so well. The nonlinear methods, and some of them we learn uh, later on in this course, they work a lot better. And here's another uh, um, set of examples, uh, performances of uh, different algorithms. And this is the, bar, the, sorry, the top left is the original data, which is three dimensional, and it's uh, in the form of a Swiss roll. Uh, it, uh, it's very commonly used for uh, evaluating the performance of different manifold learning algorithms. And now here, uh, most of these methods are nonlinear, but PCA is a linear method, and what PCA did is it simply flattened out one dimension, and you see that uh, the student mentions, you can almost see the, uh, uh, the Swiss roll here. And uh, the other linear method is MDS, which also didn't do such a good job. It uh, simply flattened out uh, the Swiss roll data along another dimension. And uh, so with that, we, uh, conclude uh, this introduction, and uh, we will begin in the next lecture with PCA.